Hello and welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Bjorn Ulbro. I'm uh, Bertsela's uh, energy business representative for Europe and Africa. And uh, I'd like to talk to you about some of the exciting things that are happening despite the overall doom and gloom of COVID-19. I'm joined here with my friend and colleague, uh, Matti Rautkivi. Matti, would you uh, say a word about who you are? Thanks, Bjorn. Yeah, I'm Matti Rautkivi. I'm working for Wärtsilä Energy Business and uh, working with the strategy and uh, business development and all new exciting stuff that we will see in near future. So Matti, um, maybe just let's dive right into this. Um, you have done some some super interesting analysis and, um, you know, the the, uh, the impact of COVID-19 uh, has, an, uh, has an extended effect then on, on the power systems of uh, um, of Europe. So could you uh, could you take us through here, you know, what, what has happened and, and maybe touch on, you know, why does that matter? Absolutely. So um, we built this um, energy transition lab that um, this is tool called. Uh, basically, it's uh, we have taken the information that is publicly available uh, for the European Union energy system and to describe that what is the situation right now, that what is happening with the with the COVID-19 in the electricity systems and what is the impact and uh, and and that's a platform then that we and and hopefully many others will, will be using uh, as a as a tool that we can also start to analyze that what potentially will happen in the near future. But uh, as you ask that why does this matter? I think that the the most interesting thing what we see already now based on based on the data. That um, and this is the this is the view how how does it look like? But uh, <clears throat> but the share of renewable generation is actually now going up. So so because of the demand in the electricity system is going down, we have seen the lockdowns in in several European countries. So the electricity demand is is going down. We can see here it, that it's 4.6 percent down if we compare from the beginning of the year until the uh, beginning of the March. And, uh, and the share of renewables is 40%. It has been 40% of the electricity produced in European Union with, uh, with renewables since the beginning of the, of the year. And if we'll then look at, let's say that uh, from the beginning of March, when uh, uh, COVID-19 started really, really hit, uh, we see the even more in more uh, deeper, uh, deep in the, in the load, around 9%, and an even higher share of renewables. So, I see that this is uh, actually, <clears throat> regardless of the really severe situation, the crisis, this is also for the energy side, this is a super interesting time that uh, that we are able to analyze in real life and see that how these high renewable systems work. We have suddenly way more renewables than we would have in the, let's call it normal situation. So we start to see those challenges, opportunities, uh, areas of improvement what we need to do when we are building the, the systems uh, for for the for the future can you just maybe for for some of our listeners here Matti, explain why in this situation does um, doesn't all capacity go down uh, or, or or all sources of generation go down equally why is it that that the share of renewable actually remains uh, or, or is is higher um, than than for example gas or coal yeah, that's good. That's a good point, and that's in general that uh, what we call flexibility. Uh, flexibility that what is the part of that needs to be flexible. So the renewables are producing ele electricity regardless of COVID-19. When the sun is shining and wind is blowing, they are they are providing electricity, and at the same time our load has gone down. So the relative share of renewables is actually increasing, and that's the that's the reasoning why the share of renewables is higher. And if we look at the numbers here, for example, that what has been the biggest impact is actually the coal generation. It's almost one third down compared to the previous year. And then yeah. gas, gas is also a little bit down. And, and, and those are the parts that are, are going down. And why coal more than gas is, is the reason that you can't really run the coal plants, this kind of inflexible generation so efficiently in this type of environment that it's reducing uh, reducing more than a uh, more flexible gas generation then. But uh, if you look beyond the numbers a little bit still that that what you see that this is kind of glimpse to the future that um, I think that everybody should be quite excited that we have a uh, higher share of renewables. CO2 intensity is like 16% down uh, if in the beginning of March 
cold generation 27 percent down so this is a kind of really big change is what we see and this is something that we probably will see in the future or for sure we'll see in the future when uh, when the zero renewables start to increase after the COVID-19 once again. I find this uh, super interesting in, in the perspective is that uh, you know everybody in the bi- in the business has been talking about how renewables uh, is going to grow uh, but I you know it's been it's been a discussion that's been based on forecasts and intelligent opinion uh, now it's actually facts uh, yes. which I find super interesting and 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 you know, just to just to make this a bit more tangible, could we do a deep dive maybe on a country like, for example, Germany here, see how uh, how this actually plays out and, and what it means for uh, for that energy system? Absolutely. So uh, let's let's look at them uh, from the beginning of the of the year, and um, we can select whichever country here in the in in the European Union, <clears throat> and uh, and uh, have the deep dive deep dive to to Germany. Germany as as um, that's kind of a I would say that actually one of the the most interesting ones. Now it's loading a li- little bit, but um, so you will o- it will open up the, this kind of a screen, the country view, and um, and Germany. Uh, so uh, first of all in Germany, and I'm now looking the whole three months <coughs> three months um, uh, to, to get that kind of little bit bigger picture here. Uh, but uh, their renewables, 57%. So Germany is actually producing almost 60% of the electricity with, with renewables. If we would look April, April time frame, it would be even more. So, uh, that so you massive. can that is that is massive, and it's actually getting even more interesting when we look some of the facts. So, uh, so but if you look here, Jern, you can see that the the light blue one is the actual load uh, last year compared to this year. So there is a significant uh, change also in Germany. Now people are talking about Italy, but also we start to see that in Germany where the COVID-19 crisis start, started a couple of weeks uh, later. And then uh, we have the generation mix here and the overall generation. So we have the hourly data here, the dispatch that what has happened in Germany. And uh, and and but when we look then at the, this um, view of this, I think that we start to see those that what you talk about the the, the integration and how the renewable system will work. Uh, so first of all, here down we have the daily share of renewable generation, and uh, you can look that day by day. That for example, 11th of April, I think that was last Friday, 55% renewables, renewables, and the rest were provided by by then fossil fuel generation. But uh, look at this one. So this is the daily generation mix now uh, that that has been produced in Germany, and and you can see that the that the yellow one here is solar and it's increasing when we go towards the summer which is logical in Germany the sun is shining more during the summer so for example last Friday it was 23 percent of the electricity was provided by solar already in Germany and at the same time <clears throat> wind was providing only nine percent because it wasn't windy day but what happens now uh, in Germany let's say in a couple of weeks if we start to see similar days than 21st of February, for example, that wind is providing all, the wind is providing solely 51% of electricity, and at the same time solar is providing 25. So we start to see kind of 80% renewables in Germany, and and uh, those are the days that uh, we uh, we need to be prepared. Now it's not happening 2030 time frame that everybody was predicting, but it's happen it can happen and most likely will happen before summer. So, uh, so it really interesting time to look at how these systems will work, and, uh, and and that's why we need everybody to analyze this and understand that because we can learn from this, and and then we can we can make this energy transition happen even faster. Thanks, Matti. This is this is really fascinating and and uh, uh, a very impressive analysis here. And and um, uh, a shout out then to listeners here is that this tool is available on uh, on the link that you see on the screen. And uh, we invite everybody here, uh, uh, stakeholders and customers and, and uh, competitors to have a look at this and, and uh, you know, let's start the conversation as to um, uh, what, what are we going to do about this? And, uh, you know, this, this um, COVID-19 situation has brought us a glimpse into the energy future of, uh, of, um, <clears throat> of Europe. And um, I think the discussion about uh, how we need to act uh, can, can start now. So. I think this is a fantastic, uh, fantastic, and fantastically interesting uh, tool 
and and I really look forward to uh, to the conversations. Uh, you will see more of myself and Matti here uh, on the screen and in this channel. So um, stay tuned. Uh, please engage and uh, and uh, speak to you soon.